Today's video is debunking the Monty Hall paradox. Now, this is probably the most famous paradox of all time, and it's first of all not a paradox. It's just a mathematical illusion. And secondly, the illusion is actually an illusion because the mathematics itself is wrong. And we're going to be getting into that in this video. Sam Harris, in his Google Talks, um, and he's a very, very famous intellectual. Most people probably know Sam Harris. Um, he said he uses the Monty Hall paradox as an example of why we have to trust science over our intuitions. Well, it's a very, very, very bad example because it turns out uh, people's intuitions are probably right for the wrong reason, but they're still probably right in the end. Now, this video is going to be more math focused because I'm tired of repeating the same thing over and over again. So let's get right to the mathematics. Here we go. All right. So this is the original Monty Hall problem here below. And we're going to solve it with a probability tree. Now, there might be some modern versions of it, but it's the original that we're concerned with. So you're on a game show. There's three doors. One of them has a car. Two of them have goats. Yada, 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 yada. Looks good so far. The host who knows what's behind the doors opens another door and shows you a goat. And then he says, do you want to switch doors or stay with the same door? <clears throat> is, it, is it to your advantage to switch? Well, let's just find out. Okay, we'll just do the math. Uh, you could uh, originally pick the car, you have one third chance of that. You're just randomly picking a door, right? You have a one third chance of picking goat number one and a one third chance of picking goat number two. Great. Now in the event that you pick a car, there's a one sixth chance that the host will reveal goat number one. There's a one sixth chance he'll reveal goat number two. If you pick goat number one, there's a one sixth chance he'll reveal the car. And there's a one sixth chance he'll reveal goat number two. And this is a possibility. I know some people are gonna say he didn't pick the car. Um, we can see that he revealed a goat, but that's not how probability works. If you flip a coin and the outcome of the coin toss is tails, this doesn't mean you change the probability function to be 100% tails. The probability function is still 50-50. The probability function is the cause of the outcome of the coin toss. The outcome of the coin toss is not the cause of the probability function. That's backwards logic. Nowhere does it state that the host picking the car is not a possibility. So this is a possibility on our tree, okay? Um, there's a one six chance you'll pick goat number two and he'll pick the car and there's a one six chance you'll pick goat number two and he'll pick goat number one. Right, okay, I think everyone's probably following me pretty good so far. That probably all makes pretty good sense. And now there's uh, three scenarios that can happen, all right? So the first one is you pick the car host reveals goat, okay? You pick the car and the host reveals a car is not a possible scenario. That's not something that can happen on our tree. Okay, so the next is you pick uh, a goat and host reveals a goat. And the last scenario is you pick a goat, host reveals a car. This one we're not concerned with, okay? This one's not relevant to our uh, problem here because the host has revealed a goat. So only these two scenarios are relevant to what we're dealing with, okay? But there is a one third probability that this could happen, all right? Or to write it more, more correctly, it's one sixth plus one sixth, right? Because um, there's a one sixth chance here and there's a one sixth chance here, right? So um, how many uh, scenarios are there where you pick the car and the host reveals the goat? Well, you pick the car, so he could reveal goat one, that's one case, or he could reveal goat two, that's two cases. So it's one six plus one sixth. Okay, great. You pick a goat and the host reveals a goat. Well, you could have picked goat one, in which case he could only have revealed goat two. So there's one sixth chance of that. And you could have picked goat two, in which case he can only reveal goat one. So there's a one sixth chance of that, right? It's either this scenario or this scenario. This is the only ones where you pick a goat and the host reveals a goat. Okay, so we have equal odds of you picking a car and the host revealing a goat. We have the same odds of that as you picking a goat and the host reveals a goat. And the same odds of you pick a goat and the host reveals a car. So what does that all mean? Well. In which of these scenarios would it be favorable to switch, assuming we want to win the car? Well, the answer is this one here. 
this one we want to switch check why do we want to switch well it's pretty simple okay so if you pick the goat and that's the first door eliminated and the host reveals a goat and that's another door eliminated well the only door remaining is the car so switching in this scenario is favorable right in this scenario when we switch okay you pick the car host reveals a goat well then whenever we switch in this scenario we lose so we don't want to switch so switching is profitable here and it's not profitable here and we have the exact same odds of getting here as we do getting here so half the time switching will make us win and half the time switching will make us lose and again we can ignore we can ignore this extra third here right we could because that's not relevant in this problem so the monty hall problem is wrong it's clearly 50 50 okay you have just as good odds of winning as losing by switching because the problem is leaving out a key assumption okay and this is the big thing that they're leaving out which is the host is not um opening doors randomly he is systematically avoiding the car okay that is the big part of the problem that needs to be in here but isn't when we do this this will change the odds and then the you know popular version of the monty hall paradox will be true i'm not going to explain the math to that because there's a million videos on that if you want me to i could do a video on that now i know people are going to say because he knows what's behind the doors it therefore logically follows that he will systematically avoid picking the car that does not logically follow okay there's no rule stated here that he can't pick the car he could pick the car 98 percent of the time and this could still be true okay so that is a logic error undoubtedly and um just because his system is non-random again it does not mean that that is his method of selection there could be a whole variety of other forms of non-random selection and in probability we always assume by default that something is random unless stated otherwise and that probabilities are equal okay so for example when we flip if i say i flip a coin we assume that there, there's two possibilities right we don't assume that tails is impossible or that head is impossible we assume both outcomes are possible and we assume that both outcomes are equally probable unless stated otherwise we assume that it's not a loaded coin unless we, we're told that it could be a loaded coin now i brought this problem to a professor at the ufc who is specifically an expert in the monty hall problem and his explanation is that um, the assumptions need to be stated correctly the host uh, knows where the car is as well as will not pick a door with the car these are assumptions that have to be stated in order for the mathematics to be correct so what do you think do you think that that successfully debunks the monty hall problem i think it certainly does uh, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and sorry to make a similar video as before but i've made so many comment responses saying the exact same thing i want to make this video just so i can send this video instead of responding over and over again